Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome to Surviving Mars. Oh, I've been looking forward to this one, and I'm rather thrilled to have got my hands on it a little bit early, because Surviving Mars is a buildy, survival, sci-fi, with a bit of narrative thrown in game, set on Mars, where as you might be able to tell from the background there, there's lots of hexagons, so this just ticks every single one of my boxes. So what's going on here is we're a company on Earth and we need to go and colonise Mars. First by sending them some robots and then by sending them some people. So the first thing we need to do is set up what company or country or like genius entrepreneur or whatever we are playing as. Which does rather change the game up a little bit which is rather cool indeed. So, for example, if you wanted to play as the USA, you get a few rockets, tons of money, loads of research, and large rockets. Whereas if we wanted to play as Europe, for example, yeah, you get yourself a bit more research, but you've got less money going on, but you get some extra starting technologies as well. In fact, go on then, I do like playing with the high research type stuff, and Europe seems to be weirdly similar to Europe in XCOM. Because, yeah, it produces extra science and stuff. Let's play as Europe. Naturally, our logo will be the Don't Panic logo. And we also need to decide what my commander's profile is. Some of these are really, really powerful bonuses. So, for example, yeah, massively increasing the birth rate on your Mars colonics. You will actually be creating new people up there. I personally really like Inventor. Drone hubs, which are very important, don't require power or maintenance. And drones will basically just keep getting slowly better and better. Oligarch is pretty good too, fuel production increased by 25% and residential spy building. Yeah, I think I'll go for Inventor, because I do like my drones just slowly getting better and flipping better. And also, there's going to be a mystery, because this isn't just a survival game where you're building things. There's also a thing going on down on the planet, of which there can be quite a few. So I'm just going to set one at random, and I don't know what's going to be happening on Mars, but something mysterious is going to be happening on Mars at the same time as I'm there, which is really, really cool. Also, I like that when you set random, it's random, but also skews towards a mystery you haven't seen before. So one you've seen before can show up, but it's more likely to be a new one. That's a nice system of waiting. So next up, we've got to send our first rocket off to Mars. We've got two rockets, one's going off now, we can send the other one later when we know what we actually need to send from Earth. Because the way it basically works is, we're trying to make a profit, or at least not go bankrupt. We started off with six billion dollars, we're already down to four billion just from sending the first rocket over, which is just going to send over some basic stuff to get us going. I'll explain this as we actually get there. I've made some slight changes to what the game recommends, just because I've played this a few hours already, so I think I kind of rather have things in a slightly different order, just so I can explain the game a bit better. Anyway, let's get over to Mars, shall we, on the good ship Tabby. This bit's really cool, by the way. You can just select any landing spot on Mars you want. The game does flag like good ones, and generally good ones are going to have like uh, relatively low threats and relatively high amounts of resource. But yeah, there's nothing to stop you just saying, no, I don't like that spot. I like this dark bit that looks like an upside down fish. So I'm going to be right there. But bear in mind, yeah, if you decide to go wherever you want, there's probably more of a chance of high threats like dust storms. And I don't know what a dust devil is, but that's probably a bad thing. Okay, these two Elysium sites will do quite nicely. This one's just a tiny bit better. So, let's head in there and get going down. Because as you probably noticed, I've made the game about as difficult as it can be. But screw it, if we're going to survive on Mars, let's survive on Mars properly. So this here is Mars, or rather a small bit of Mars representing the area we've chosen to land on. Right now, we don't really know what's going on down there. We didn't bother, like, scanning it in advance. We just thought, yeah, you know what? We'll go there, the robots will figure it out, we'll send some people later, it'll be A-OK. Okay, so we're not sending people right now, we're sending drones to do the groundwork. And that's what I love about this game. One of the core bits about this game is automation. I love automation, it makes my nerdy little heart skip a beat. So we can just like, you know, zoom in anytime we want to and have a little kind of loopsy round. And yeah, you see there's this little area here that's just kind of a big kind of valley, all encased by rock on all sides, etc, etc, etc. But there is one area, unfortunately, the game is actually scanned for us. The game just basically picks a good landing site for you. So that's absolutely fine. So how about we probably head down over into here, 
And yeah, straight away, we've got ourselves some good stuff here. We've got some, uh, that is basic metals, and that's basic concrete. Because basic materials we can scavenge off the surface of Mars, but anything a bit more advanced, we're either going to have to set up some proper infrastructure for, or we're going to have to ship it over from Earth. And yeah, Mars, we're going to have to find something to ship back to Earth to sell, so that we don't go bust. So, we've got ourselves the good ship tabby, to go with all the things I actually put in the good ship tabby, ready to go down here. So... No particular reason to shove it any place other than as close as possible to all these resources right here. So, just put the ship down, and then if we just kind of zoom out here, we actually see the ship. Hang on, just get time ticking along. The ship starts coming down, which is adorable. And then, yeah, if we want to, you can just sort of like, you know, zoom up and just zoom in. I like the scale of it, because you can get right down to the ground if you want. If you want to get right down to the ground, just kind of look around Mars. You 100% can, which is really, really damn cool. I like that a lot. So, here comes the ship. And there we go. That is one of our little craft. Let's go with our machine in just a second. Here we go. The droids are adorable, by the way. They're cute and they've got little faces and everything. They're the most adorable little droids imaginable. So, the thing we've got to deal with immediately is droids have effective rangers. So, for example, the droids that are controlled by this here ship, which is seven droids that were deployed with this ship, they can go within this range that I can set. So, if I only want them to work in the immediate area, I can lower their service area. But there's no reason not to widen that right out. The only reason why you don't want it too wide is, like, they might get distracted by, like, the metals, like, over here or something. If that's, is that metal or is that just... I think that's just rock, actually. So, that's fine. Uh, so, no, I zoomed out too far there. <laughs> Meanwhile, these droids work for this little thing. So the number of vehicles and droid control points and droid control hubs, etc., determines how many droids you've actually got on the field. You notice that this thing can't actually service as large an area, but it's mobile. So unlike the ship, which basically just takes up and goes back to Earth and is otherwise stuck where it landed, yeah, this thing can move around and potentially do a bit of exploring, which is why I kind of wanted this. So what we've got here is, that's underground metal deposit, so I'm going to need to mine that up. However, right here we've got ourselves some concrete, lots of concrete in fact. Because what we're going to be needing is the basic materials, and ah, there's just some metal on the surface, marvellous. So, I'm going to help out my drones immediately by just basically giving them, let's just find some storage stuff here. Let's just set up one metal deposit right here next to the ship immediately. So I'm going to say, okay, you lads, what I want is I want metal to end up on here. So now immediately, the droids just hop into action. They're going to gather this here metal, and maybe some of them will go over to this metal over here once they're done. And once that metal is mined up, they're going to kind of put it into a more movable form and just kind of move it onto this here platform. That can hold 180 metal. This is only 27. There's another 33 over here. If we we want like proper metal coming in over time on a regular basis we're gonna to need to actually set up a mine here but we've got some metal to start us off that's fine now you're probably thinking therefore we want to throw down a metal extractor to get this metal out we can't however metal extractors are complicated if we want to actually have that working we're gonna to need to have actual humans working the thing droids are only capable of doing simple tasks so the function of the droids is instead to actually get this place set up so humans can come along and then we can get set up properly. So right now, the droids are just automatically getting on with whatever work they want to be getting on with, which is just flipping marvellous. So what we do need instead is, if we want humans, we want a dome. If you want a dome, you're going to be needing a big pile of metals, a big pile of polymers, and also a load of concrete, which makes it bloody convenient there's a big pile of concrete here. It also makes it bloody convenient that the concrete extract can actually uh, operate without needing humans. The concrete extractor is adorable, by the way. Let's also... Yes, I know there's no cable connection. I think it's just saying it wants power. Uh, but we can give it power in a second. Uh, you notice on the right there, this is telling me how much of the resource it's covering. Uh, that is... Yeah, that's fine. So we'll get one of you down right there. Hang on, how much do we actually need for you? That requires... Two mechanical parts and six metals. Well, it's bloody convenient we're already gathering metals, isn't it? Also, the ship, we brought with us 15 polymers, 10 electrical parts, and 15 machine parts. So, two machine parts out of the ship, and then loads of metals that we've just been gathering from around here. And there we are, that deposit over there has already been finished off, in fact. And we will, in fact, have our first little concrete extractor. Marvellous. Uh, what I'll also build, because I'd like these guys to just get some stuff out of the ship, is... Here we go. 
I'll just build a universal uh, depot thing right there. So what that basically means is now the actual droids, if they've got nothing better to do, will go grab the stuff that's stored in the ship and pull it out here so they don't need to bother going into the ship every time they need something or another. Meanwhile, this concrete extractor, yep, yeah, the machine parts have already been placed there, because we can get right and have a little look-see. And also, three metals have been brought over. So the robots are now gathering the metals from the place where the metal is stored, and now they're just going to build that automatically. They just need to actually take the materials over there, which is why, potentially, you want a good series of depots set up, and potentially you want, like, little depots dotted around your base, so your robots don't have as far to wander. So some robots have now gone over here. They're very good at self-automating. <laughs> Which is really cool. So, some robots have decided to actually go and start getting resources out of the ship and putting them on the Universal Depot. Some robots are still mining over here, and some robots are immediately working on dropping off the material. Once the materials are in place, a single robot starts actually building the thing. And in a moment, we will actually have a lovely concrete production facility. And there he is, concrete production facility. Unfortunately, he's going to be needing some power before he actually does anything. Uh, how much power do you need? You need five power, and ideally we want you to be working night and day. So while we could build soda panels, obviously they only work during the day. Though actually, they do only work during the day, but I can also use a battery to store a fair amount of power. So that produces five. Actually, a wind turbine produces, ah, but a wind turbine it takes concrete to build, which I don't have yet. Let's just get a large solar panel built right here to save us on, there we go, just to save us on actual wiring costs because things have to be wired together as well. That takes metal to build. We've got loads of metal, so immediately several of the robots should in a moment spring into life. Yep, I think that one just sprung. No, no, they've decided to actually unload the ship instead, guys. Focus on this, please. If you want to, you can, of course, change the priority. So I've now just changed that to high priority. So now the robot should start building that sooner rather than later. While we're waiting on that, I also don't actually have any active research going on right now, because yes, indeed, ooh, Europe, Europe and its starting technologies for free, nice. Ah, but it doesn't actually mean I get free technology, it just means I've got more options, fine, it's like Research Alternative Plus One in Stellaris, well, that's absolutely fine too. Here we go, drone swarm. So drone hubs are constructed with two additional drones, maximum number of drones increased by 80. Yes, many, many drones. Good idea. Let's get that researched. This is partly randomised each game, by the way, because the last time I played this game, these definitely weren't the first options that showed up. So yeah, the actual uh, research is a bit randomised, which is kind of cool. Right, solar panel is completed, but not currently wired in. So let's just quickly build some wiring. Wiring, I think, requires one metal per three bits of this. You can go kind of like three hexes with a single bit of metal. So that's absolutely fine. Now, as it's night, we can actually get on with a few other bits and pieces because we also brought with us, here we are, two probes. Probes basically let me scan areas around me because right now I don't know what's going on in any of these areas. I have a vague idea what it looks like. So for example, I know I can't really build a dome here because it's mainly hilly. So this probably isn't going to be that useful to me. However, over here we've got, yeah, there's a high chance there's going to be concrete or metals over here. And also there's a fair amount of, oh, that's a meteorite coming in. Miss, 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 miss. Yep, looks like it's going to miss by not that much, to be honest. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, what have we got over here? Uh, not a good chance of anything. A good chance of concrete metals. Fine. I'm just going to throw my probes away now. Sector scanning scan. and scanning. So I know what's going on there. So I haven't discovered anything here. But I have found a really good concrete deposit here. Together with a handful of metals. That's not the only way you can scan by the way. You can just like scan over time too. So I may as well just basically say. Yeah just scan this. Scan this. Scan this. Once you're done just scan all of these. And you can. Yeah you can basically have a queue of five things to be scanned. Uh, honestly, this probably isn't worth scanning, but I may as well just, you know, like, double-check what's going on over here. I'll send myself some more probes as time goes by as well. So that there meteor strike, by the way. Actually, one of my probes is going up to it. Ooh. Okay. Apparently, there were some polymers inside that thing, so that's just a free polymer. And, uh, yeah, more droids are indeed going over to here and having a little loopsy at this. Now, we just scanned this area over here and found, as a result, we now know there's a bunch of metals around here. So, is that metal or is that just... Yeah, that's some metals. So, we've got, like, 21 there, 18 there. So, we've got another 40 metal, which will be quite useful. However, remember what I said earlier about drone control groups? So, these drones can't actually make it 
over there, which is kind of unfortunate. This guy, however, could actually help out with that a little bit. So if I wanted to, I could probably do some fun stuff here, because technically there's more vehicles I can use to help automate this later down the line. For the time being, yeah, this guy can get out to here... And these guys, so if I was just to go to, yeah, what I'm going to do is, as these droids aren't probably all helping right now, I'm going to pack up all my droids, or at least I'm going to pack up the four droids that report in to this one vehicle. So then I'm going to come over into this vehicle, and we'll just kind of speed up time, because right now it is indeed uh, night, so my solar panel is not working for the time being, so this is a good time for this. And I think it's almost day, in fact. Nights seem a lot shorter than days, which is very bloody convenient. <laughs> If probably a little bit on the unrealistic side. I'm now going to send this thing over here. And I want it to be, yeah, pretty much bang north of this thing. So I'm deploying this rover together with its contingent of drones over to this spot. And you might have figured out what I'm planning to do already. <laughs> But I think it's really damn cool. Because at this point, there is no more metal that can actually be mined or obtained by drones over here. Hang on, are you working on... Yeah, there's 22 more over here. But once that's done, this deposit, we cannot... Oh, we might just be able to get to that, but maybe not. So this rover is now just inside the range of these drones. This rover is now going to deploy its drones. And in just a moment, its service area is now over here. So what I would like these drones to do is gather this here material and instead bring it back to, if I can just basically give them a yeah, storage, a metal deposit right here. So what they're planning to do, by the way, they're bleeping because they're low on battery. Uh, if they basically run out of battery, they can just return to this vehicle and this vehicle will power them up, which is marvellous. So these guys now, as soon as they're done uh, charging each other and whatever, because I think right now they are... I think you are, hang on, what are you doing right now? You are, yeah, you are recharging, and these guys want to recharge as well. So basically, they're just waiting for a turn to recharge with the mother vehicle right here. This guy is now going to mine here and bring these materials over to here. Now, once the materials are over here, they're in range for these guys to utilise them if they need to. <laughs> Also, yeah, now that it's actually daytime, this thing has woken up. I don't know if this is how actually, like, you know, a concrete plant on Mars would look, but it does strike me that it kind of looks really cute. Like, everything in this game is cute. Like, this thing looks like a big, lovely, four-eyed robot that's sticking its tongue out in order to harvest concrete. Again, not sure how realistic that is. I love how you can get the camera super low, by the way. But it's kind of cute, and I like it. Now, a bit more storage here. This thing produces concrete. So, obviously, I'm going to want some... Hang on, where do I want the concrete thing? Perfect world, you want, like, one storage depot pretty close by to the thing. So, this is fine here, because there's going to be more of them, because this only covers this small area. So, I'm going to build, like, over time, like two more of these guys to gather concrete as quickly as possible. So a concrete thing right here is fine. However, this also produces waste rock. So I'm just going to produce a dumping site and slap that over to here. So now these drones that are attached to this here depot, and I think some of them have... Hang on, where have you guys all gone? Ah, okay. Some of you guys have naffed off way over here at this point. <laughs> So apparently you can just get inside that radius. What I'm going to do, therefore, is I'm going to lower the surface area so they stop doing that. So I don't want them to do that. I want these drones to handle that because they can bring that over to here to save these drones a very long walk. I'm trying to make this as efficient as possible, which is what these guys are doing. They're just going over here, recharging, mining here, and then taking the resources over there. And now that we're sitting on four concrete, I can actually throw down a wind turbine, which would be absolutely marvellous. So let's just throw down a handful of wind turbines uh, up here. So I can immediately afford one of them, thanks to all the concrete we're gathering. So this guy has picked up a concrete. He's going to bring it over here, and then probably he's going to take it straight back over there again, and a couple of drones are going to actually make ourselves a nice little wind turbine, and then we'll have power even at night, so this thing can then keep working. Or I could just build more solar panels, build a battery, and just save up enough power to run it at night. So as things get more complicated, I probably need some more drones. So these guys just naffing off over here. So I've got myself a free drone hub. This is because I brought myself a free prefab drone hub. So this thing doesn't need materials. Instead, I just slap it down wherever I feel like it. The drone hub has an effective range, just like um, the rocket. However, the drone hub, of course, because I can build it elsewhere, I could actually use to cover different territory I haven't previously got coverage of. So I may as well slap it, say... Uh, 
over here just to make sure these drones have full coverage of those rocks over there. So that guy's just going to get put down. Probably at some point someone will go and grab the prefab. I'm not sure whether are these the prefabs or possibly the prefab is just in the rocket at the minute and they will actually go slap that down and that will be worth a big pile of extra drones also this thing is not currently plugged in that's fine we just need a little bit more wiring power cable right to here and that will all hook in together now I should probably also get, if I've got enough, I've got three concrete right now. Yep, three is exactly what I need for one battery. So let's actually have some excess power being stored over here next to the power generation business. That would be lovely. And make sure we've wired that in as well. Actually, I think you need to wait for it to be built before you can wire it in. Otherwise, the game gets a tiny bit confused on occasion. Still, these guys are doing their job now. They've recharged themselves in this thing, and now they're just sending themselves backwards and forwards. <laughs> Automation, my nerd little heart skips a beat when I'm automating things. I probably also should. Now I've got 10 power in the grid, because yeah, this is uh, one of the useful things. If you actually uh, click on anything that produces power or stores it, it actually tells you what the current state of the entire grid is, which is kind of cool. Right now, the production and the use is 5 and 5, because this thing is not yet wired in, so it's not technically part of the grid. If I was to click on it, it would be in its, presumably in its own grid? I'm not sure. I think that's true anyway. Elevation boost 27. Ooh, okay. That's something fun. So wind turbines, you want to build at higher altitudes by the looks of things. So actually, if I could find a way to build them over here, that might actually produce a lot of bonus power. Now that's interesting. Still, let's not worry about that for now. For the moment, at least, we're sitting on tons of metal. And as soon as this is down, yeah, now we've got 10 bajillion drones. We've got these drones and these drones as well. So we've got a lot of drones going on here. So what we probably want is slapping down a couple of extra concrete things to get as much concrete in as quickly as possible. Each of these concrete hubs requires five power, so that will be absolutely fine. In fact, yeah, we've got plenty of materials to slap down this one as well. So I'm going to slap down three of them. But if I want three of them, then I'm going to need, yeah, more power. So if, in fact, that wind turbine produces five plus a bit extra, that will be fine. Just hook that next to this one. And we've got ourselves, is that batch ready to go? Must be connected to a power producer. Ah, Okay, that's fine. Uh, back to power. Back to power cables. So now, if I just basically build that to here, that will just figure all of that out. Sometimes, yeah, the cables also get a tiny bit confused. Like, it would be nice if you just, like, click one spot there, and it would just basically say, okay, so you want to connect everything in adjacent hexes. But it doesn't actually quite work like that. So I don't think it does. Maybe I'm just misusing it. I'm not sure. I haven't played this for more than a few hours. Okay, following morning, three of these guys now actually built. This one's just waiting for some power, but I do actually have enough power infrastructure during the day at least to actually get that set up. Also, I love the way batteries work, by the way. Everything's visually very clear. So, like, the battery is squeezed into the ground when there's no power in it. As it fills up, it actually rises up. It's like some sort of power accordion, which, again, is probably not how electricity works, but I don't care because it's beautiful. It just makes a lot of sense, and it's visually very interesting. These guys are about done. Because as soon as this guy is dumped to this metal here, they are completely finished with this area. So, as soon as this is down, what I should do is basically say, recall all these drones and move these guys somewhere a little bit more on the useful side. Because now they're not actually helping at this exact moment in time, because there's nothing for them to do. So everyone on board, and you can actually watch them like climb into the back of the truck. It's just lovely. Everything just looks so lovely. And we'll bring them back over here. Maybe we'll get them working on this patch of metal. After all, if they're working on that, the droids over here can focus on more important stuff. Though, to be honest, at the moment, we've probably got enough droids that we're not really tasking them to capacity. Now, let's zoom out here. We're currently scanning this area. As you see, scanning takes a little bit of a while. Fortunately, you can speed it up a bit by throwing down some buildings. So, we've actually got plenty to do with these resources we're gathering right now. So, right here, we've got ourselves a sensor tower. It's going to eat a little bit of power but it only actually requires one electronic part. We've got plenty of that. Note maintenance, by the way. We've got plenty of metal. Unfortunately, these basic buildings just require one metal to actually be maintained. Maintenance happens like once every few days or something. It's really not a thing to worry about at this exact moment in time. So I'm going to slap down one sensor tower. No cable connection. Well, that's absolutely fine. We will be able to wire that into the grid. No problem at all. In fact, actually, this guy is not currently wired into the grid. So let's just actually wire you 
in automatically. It would, no, that's not the right spot. That is fine, though. It would kind of be nice, by the way, if, like, you know, if you actually built power things literally adjacent to other power things, they were automatically wired. And it feels like they kind of should be, but that's not how it works. You need to actually, like, have these wires here to get these guys wired in, which is a little bit on the odd side. Actually, if I build this, if I just build that, and then I just say, like, that to there, is that... Okay, you can do that, actually. Fine. You don't actually need that bit. You could do that a little bit more easily than I just did. Because you could just put down one thing there. That connects that to that. But this kind of feels like adjacent things ought to be automatically connected. That would just be a nice little time saver. Maybe that's a research option to help you as time goes by. I'm not sure. How much does this require, by the way? Oh, just one stone and one electronic. So this guy's already almost built this. Fine. So in which case, we can just get on a little bit of wiring. So that's going to need some power. Well, that's absolutely fine. We've got some power right there. That will wire that into the grid. And we've got more stuff coming in there in terms of power of all of these wind turbines. So let's just actually check on the status of the grid here. Grid right now is total demand 15, hourly production 24.1. And we've also got a fair amount of stored power here. So yeah, we're in good shape for the minute. Now, the reason I want to throw this thing down and also get it powered up is because right now we're missing a couple of important things. Uh, the things we're missing are, one, water, because we can't be shipping water over from Earth. Water is a little bit on the heavy side, so we need to find a good source of water. This area might contain water, so at some point we're going to want to scan this area over here. We also need to find some rare minerals or rare metals to actually mine up. Because sooner or later we go bankrupt if we don't find them. So as soon as we've got that tower down, we start scanning a lot faster, which will indeed be quite bloody useful. Now the next thing we need to worry about is getting this here ship back to Earth at some point. Because we can summon a new ship over with more stuff, but yeah, we can't have these guys just sitting here forever. So what we need to do is have ourselves some fuel. Fuel can be produced using a fueling thing that turns water into fuel, which probably isn't science, but whatever. But I brought a couple of prefabs with me to help me do precisely that. So if we go over here, I've brought myself one moisture evaporator. So basically, yeah, for a consumption of five power, then I can actually, yeah, in a maintenance of two uh, metal, I can slowly be producing just a little bit of water. Not enough to support a colony, but enough to potentially produce some fuel out of. So let's just actually get ourselves that. That can just be... I can just be over here, just kind of, you know, chilling out with the rest of the infrastructure. In fact, I'll have it over here so it's a bit more visually distinct. And also, we've got ourselves anomalies being discovered. This here is an anomaly. We've just finished scanning this sector, and this sector is being scanned a lot faster thanks to that sensor tower. Just look at that. That's going up so much quicker than the first one, and that's sped up hugely. We've also got ourselves an anomaly and a different type of reading. Now, I don't actually have a vehicle that can go and scan those. Not yet, anyway. We will be able to do that down the line. In fact, actually, at some point, I'll probably send a new ship over to deliver the new types of vehicles, because there's more vehicles than what I've got. This is the vehicle I like starting with, because I like showing off how you can move it around and use the control zones, because that's just really cool. You guys have come over here. This has been built. This needs power to operate. That's absolutely fine. And I also brought a prefab along for a fuel refinery. So that consumes one water, which is conveniently exactly what I'm producing. And that can produce, albeit with a maintenance of... Ooh. With a maintenance of machine parts, which I have a limited number of. But we can ship more over from Earth. That's fine. That can produce fuel. Quite a lot of fuel, which means I can actually send some ships home again. So let's just actually get that right over here. And someone will get working on that. And this little guy is also building the wires to wire this in. Because both of them are going to be needing power as well. Marvellous. Like, just like going down onto the ground. And just kind of having a little loopsy round in this game. And all the droids just going around their business. And the universal storage. And the giant concrete things with don't panic written on the back of them. Just getting on with their business. And oh, it's just it's lovely. It's just absolutely flipping lovely. Okay, so. The moisture evaporator and the fuel thing have both been hooked in. This is now powered, so it's producing water, but the water's not going anywhere right now. So, things we need to build uh, right now. First, we need a power cable just to get this to here. That will wire that into the grid. Very, very nice indeed. Though power can pass through buildings, by the way. This thing is being powered by these things. Power passes down these cables through this thing to this thing. So don't worry if, like, you know, you're blocked off by buildings, because power can just pass through buildings. In fact, actually, that can often just kind of mean you spend less on wiring, so it's not a bad idea to actually pass power along buildings. But now, now we've got concrete coming in. 
Oh yeah, we're up to 56 concrete. So we've got plenty of concrete coming in, which is a good starting point here. This will momentarily be powered. We also need some pipes. Uh, because, uh, hang on, not pipe, valve, a uh, pipe. Because basically, if I just build this right here, that should... Okay, that might have been a bit excessive. There's just an extra loop in there. Can I cancel that, by the way? I think I can cancel that. Just Okay, I cancelled the whole thing. Hang on. If I just lay one pipe there and I just say that's fine. Yeah, just there. There we go, that's fine. Okay, so now I've just built a very simple, efficient pipe. So there's going to be one pipe that's basically just going to feed water out of the moisture evaporator into the fuel refinery and everything will be fine. I probably have problems with power by now, by the way, because I've started powering a fair bit of stuff. The power grid's uh, hourly production right now is 19.1. Total demand is 27. So yes, I need to put some more stuff in. It will be better during the day when this thing wakes up, but only by, I think, five. So, luckily, the battery is taking the straight at the minute. It's just kind of, you know, accordion squeezing its power out. But I do need to build some more wind turbines, yes. Luckily, I've got plenty of flipping concrete, so that's not a problem right now. You do, however, want a nice, diverse system of power, because certain things don't work in certain weather conditions. No, like, you know, research. bad things research. might happen research. that might mean we can't use our wind turbines anymore, but the solar panels might still work. So, you've got to be a bit careful also... We're producing waste rock a little bit on the fast side here. That's going to get filled up sooner or later. But then also, this whole area, hang on, this whole area of concrete is also being... Actually, we've got tons of concrete yet to actually get out. We've only harvested like a hundred of that. There's still like 2,400 to go. Marvellous. Now, drone swarm's complete, so we've got ourselves some free extra drones, and that unlocks more advanced robot... Ooh! Drones and robots 25% faster. Yeah, I'll be having that every time, thank you. Or I could have wind turbine upgrade, power production increased by 33%. Okay, I'll have both of them in a row, please. Both of them sound awesome. Now, as for my little rover, I'm going to send that over to here. And I'm going to basically use this little rover. Yeah, this is fine. Deploy your drones right here. This should be in range. Marvellous. So, you drones, I'd like you to basically go and mine this. And I'd like you to bring it to over here so all the other drones aren't wasting their time walking from all the way over here over there. So this is just going to slowly make things a little bit more efficient. Hang on, where's your where's your effective range up to here? Your effective range is to... Ah, we can literally put it right by here. That's fine. Now, one thing I'll say for this game, which I absolutely love, is the UI needs a little bit of work. Because basically, if you've not got anything selected and then you right-click, you do get a brief summary as to what's going on here, which is like, you know, how many basic resources you've got, what's the state of the grid, like what's the power surplus and so forth. But... It's very hard to know when you're making profit or loss for your basic resources. Like, that's important. Like, if this was Stellaris, then right to the top it would be saying, okay, how many minerals am I getting in per hour? How many am I spending per hour? What's the stockpile? Am I making profit or loss? But this game doesn't really do that, especially with some resources like food. It can be quite hard to uh, figure out whether or not that... Ooh. You guys automatically wired into the grid. Right, you did the thing I said you wanted. Possibly it's because you were actually one space over, not from a friend, but from this blob here. I'm not 100% sure. And indeed, fueling is going on right now. We are up to... Yeah, fuel is one out of 60. So now it's actually kicking off and it's actually powered. We'll produce 12 fuel a day. So in five days or thereabouts, this thing will be ready to head for home. Marvellous. You'll also notice that the only drones working on this metal over here are these guys, because they're the only ones that can. These guys can't get out there anymore, so as a result, these robots are actually focusing on the important duties around here and not wasting their time over here. I'm having these guys basically do the long-range legwork so that I can keep a core number of drones busy around the actual main base. <laughs> I love this game. I'm also just going to throw a fuel depot down right here next to the rocket. So when this place produces fuel, robots, if they've got nothing better to do, will take the fuel over to next to the rocket, because that's a sensible place for the fuel to be stored. The reason why we want to be gathering so much metal, by the way, is most of these buildings do actually need to be maintained at some point. So, for example, yeah, this guy up here, the sensor tower, at some point, it's going to basically need to be maintained, otherwise it'll break down. Needs one metal to do that. That's going to be needing, ooh, that's going to be needing maintenance of, yeah, that's a bit of a concern. That's probably why we don't want nothing but wind turbines. 
Those require a lot of mechanical parts to keep going. I might want to throw down some extra solar panels just in case that becomes a problem. In fact, it might actually be time to start thinking about the second rocket. Though, before we do that, there's one thing I want to finish up here. Okay, I am now suddenly very, very relieved indeed because, yeah, I scanned uh, this tile down here where the game was saying, oh, you're going to find water down here. There was no water. The thing is, we can't really start thinking about humans on Mars until we find some underground water. Fortunately, down here, where the game said there wasn't going to be water or didn't specifically flag it as likely, we found a good supply of water. It's loads of water. It's not the best quality water, but it'll flipping do. So that means it's time to get our second ship out here. Because this here is just like, you know, the buildy, let's just mine resources -y kind of area. But down here, this is where we lay the groundwork for humans. However, in order to like do things like, you know, dig up water and go mining and all the rest of it, I think it's time we send over some new supplies and some new buggies. Because this ship's still here and this ship is, uh, yeah, refueling and will be doing for some time. Let's send over, or rather, let's get ready to send over our other ship. Because we've still got one other rocket here, so it is a cargo rocket, we're not ready for people just yet. So now, with 4.5 billion in funding... We've been getting some funding. Oh yeah, Europe gets a bonus in money every time it researches a tech. That's where a bit of extra money came from. As a result, it's time for us to ship over some new stuff. So there's a couple of things I haven't actually kind of looked at yet. So for example, if I want to be able to produce advanced stuff on Mars, I can ship over a prefab for a machine parts factory. We're not ready for that yet. That'll probably be our third rocket trip. Sterling Generator basically just produces a ton of power pretty much for free, but is expensive and heavy. So don't worry about that for now, because we've got plenty of solar panels and wind power for the time being. I think the rest of this is, yeah, that's just factories there. So we don't need to worry about that. Probably wouldn't hurt to have one additional control drone hub thing here. That, yeah, that doesn't weigh that much. 5,000 kilograms and doesn't cost that much either. Now, we've already got one RC rover. That's fine. What I want next up is the RC Explorer. This is the thing that lets me actually have a little look at all of those mysteries, which is very, very useful indeed. And the RC Transport, basically a truck that lets you move materials around from control zone to control zone. Again, it's a bit on the heavy side, but I would like to get both of these over there. So I'm willing to spend like half my weight just getting the other two types of drone out and about. You do need like at least one little drone just to start you off, because drones basically are the things that you're going to need to actually, you know, build the, uh, the drone hub that produces a load more drones. So make sure you take at least one drone with you just in case. Don't need concrete or anything like that. We've got plenty of that. Metals, foods, polymers, etc. One thing we could do with would be, yeah, some machine parts. Those are starting to run a little bit on the low side. Orbital probes are a little bit on the expensive side, 100 million each, but for instant scanning of surrounding areas, it wouldn't hurt just to have a couple of them chilling out in orbit ready to go. And in fact, actually, that's 20 machine parts. Each click is worth five, so that's better than I thought it was going to be. So in the end, the two types of transport we haven't had before, one drone hub, none of the rest of it, don't need any of that, because, yeah, the actual diggy, undergroundy, watery thing, we can build by ourselves with the materials that we've actually got. So that's absolutely fine. Then we've just got three drones to kick us off over there, together with just a whole bunch of polymers, machine parts, some electronics, and two orbital probes. Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Hang on, there's... I just clicked the wrong thing. Hang on. Right, that's that reset up. So, we've still got 2.5 billion in the bank. That's fine. This is the good ship, Claire. So if the first ship is Tabby, it makes sense that Claire would be in a hurry to go and join Tabs over on the surface of Mars. Plenty of machine parts to keep us going there. Let's launch this ship. Obviously, it does take a little bit of time to actually get, like, you know, the ship to Mars from Earth. So, the Claire is not going to arrive just for a little bit. It's already up to 1%. Like, it's pretty fast. It's pretty bloody fast. I'm not sure what this is like supposed to represent like... Well, it does actually say that represents a day. So possibly we've got some form of super fast engines. Because it's kind of generally like a ship takes a couple of days to arrive at Mars. I think it takes longer than that in real life. Probably by quite a long way, in fact. Now, perfect timing. I've just been kind of increasing the concrete infrastructure over here. Running some additional power around here. Building some additional solar panels up here as well. I have literally, I believe, just run out of machine parts, so isn't it bloody convenient that 30 more are shipping in on that new rocket? 
Is it not also convenient? Yeah, this thing is halfway to refueled. So as soon as it's refueled, I could send this back to Earth purely to pick up more machine parts if that's what I need. But my wind farm is a little bit on the, uh, yeah, kind of uh, intensive on the old uh, machine part front because I kind of need more machine parts for this. Right, this thing is now ready to come in. Marvellous. Time to figure out where we want to land the good ship, Claire. Now the question is how much I want these areas to overlap or not, because there's nothing really down here. If I were to overlap here, or rather if I was to put the ship about here, then these ships would actually be able to share their Universal Depot, because the Universal Depot is that one right there, and the Universal Depot has got all the important stuff on it. It would also mean that the parts that I'm unloading right now, hang on, let's just quickly check this guy. Yeah, if I was to whack up the service area, because there's no reason not to anymore. If I was to put a Universal Depot down here, then these guys would actually be able to basically share with each other. So everything I unload, if these guys need it, they can actually go and get it. So that's probably not a bad idea, to be honest. What I'll do is I'll slap it down... I'll slap it down here-ish, just kind of out of the way. I'll build my own Universal Depot, very close by, and we'll work from there. Yeah, this... this should work. So, the Claire is now going to come down over here, which is marvellous. I've pre-deployed these guys over here as well, which is very, very helpful indeed. And momentarily, we will be getting in some brand new infrastructure that we really, really, really need zoom out to see. There, there it is. I need to actually get a time ticking on there. There's the Claire. Here she comes. Marvellous. Down into the bottom right corner. In fact, actually, technically, she's deploying into Sector J1. That doesn't actually matter other than for scanning. Like, once you've got it uncovered, it doesn't actually matter at all that, like, you know, you want to mine in one area or be in another. The sectors themselves are actually fairly small, all things considered. And here comes all of the sexy stuff, all of the new vehicles. Say hello to the RC Explorer. The RC Explorer basically does all the scanning. So let's immediately send it over there to have it a look-see at this particular spot. It's a little bit slower, I think, than some of the others. And this here is a rather convenient truck. And yeah, we brought three of these lads with us. So, straight away, a couple of things that we're going to be needing. Number one, we brought a drone hub with us. So let's actually just get that slapped down immediately. Doesn't require any power or anything. And very conveniently, yeah, it will just basically give us a huge number of drones down there. However, I don't have any materials. Because this area is technically... Yeah, this area doesn't actually have any of the raw materials we need in it. So say, for example, I wanted to build a universal depot right here. Can't actually... Ooh. Maybe I can, because that... Wait, does this not cost anything? I thought these... I always assumed these cost something. But maybe they don't. Uh, yeah, let's just build a universal depot. Right, no, apparently those are just free to throw down. Which is marvellous, because that means my drones will now basically get on with unloading the ship immediately. Now, is that in the right position? Yes, it is. Because now, machine parts that are going to be unloaded onto here are in range of this camp as well. So these drones from this camp at least, and you as well? Yeah, and you as well, marvellous. They will actually be able to go and grab whatever they need. So these two camps can trade with each other freely, which is very convenient. Aside from the fact, actually, not quite. Um, yeah. This spot actually wasn't quite right. This spot should have been slightly more in this direction so that these guys could also have gone and grabbed stuff from here. But that's fine. We'll use this as the main hub and it won't be a problem. So, these drones are now basically dedicating themselves for the time being to dropping off supplies here, including those crucial machine parts. I imagine sooner or later we're going to see some robots from this Second side scan. come over here Select to claim some machine scan. parts. Also, I've actually got, yeah, I've now got two new orbital probes. So if I want to, I can start scanning around like crazy. But I don't need to worry about that just for the time being. Let's instead focus on the infrastructure that we do actually need. So, what do I need to get some water set up here? That's a pretty big priority because that's what we need to get humans. A water extractor is going to require... Yeah, it's going to require some power. Fine. It's also going to require two machine parts. Fine. And also some maintenance. And it's also going to be requiring six concrete. Now, there's no concrete inside the range here, which is exactly what this thing is for, the RC transport. So what the RC transport's going to basically do is I'm going to set up a... 
and I can actually set up a transport route for it. Uh, if you want to, you can automate it. On this occasion, I'm just going to make it a one-off sort of thing. So what I'm going to say about this thing is I want it to load some resources over here. So I wanted to go over to the concrete. I wanted to indeed load some concrete, and I don't want it to load all of it. I don't need huge amounts, but it would be good to actually have 30 concrete over there. So he's now going to go and get 30 concrete, which is his limit. He can only carry 30 things. So he's now going to... I just cancelled that. Yes, sometimes the controls are a little bit on the fiddly side. Just, no. Load these resources. Concrete. Now he's trying to load all the resources. Don't do that. Load resource. I'll get it in a second. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Then I just actually left click, and now he's going to get on with his business by himself. Marvellous. And by the way, there's also meteorite strikes coming in. Marvellous. So he's going to do that, and then I'll tell him to unload them. If I wanted to, what I could do is I could have that be automated so I could create a transport route. Where basically, what I say is, yes, shut up. I know we just analyzed the thing. I'll get to that in a second. Where I basically say, always go to this one point, pick up a certain number of things, and then once you've picked them up, bring them back to this point, and he'll just do that in a loop which is just beautiful. And yeah, I think here is a couple of robots coming to pick up machine parts to keep these things running. Also, I failed to wire this correctly. Also, what did I just send? I just did the thing again. No, no, just, just gather this, please. Yeah, sometimes I think the controls might need a tiny bit of work yet, or maybe I just haven't got used to them. So, my truck is now heading over here, and he's just going to dump a whole bunch of concrete down here, which is marvellous, because that is what I need to get the water turned on. So, life support. Water extractor. Let's just turn that around so it's facing up. Shove that down right over there. So some of my droids will immediately spring into life and carry over, I believe, the two machine parts that are required to get that going. The rest of them will be a bit confused because they've got no concrete. However, momentarily, concrete will be detected and everything will be just flipping marvellous. So he's now just dumping a whole bunch of concrete down right there. The drones detect it and basically spring in that direction and everything is lovely. In fact, actually... For some reason, some of them started trying to carry concrete over there. Possibly because I think the concrete depots might be starting to uh, fill up a little bit. So uh, they're trying to kind of distribute the concrete a bit more fairly. Which is possibly a thing they do indeed try and do. That's recharging, by the way. The drones take care of recharging by themselves. Whenever they get low on battery, they just go over to the nearest vehicle or what have you. By the way, what was the, um, the anomaly? Because we scanned an anomaly, I believe. I think that one was just worth bonus research, that's fine. In which case, you, my good man, just head over here and scan these. Because we actually have, I think we've got, how many more anomalies have we got? We've got these two here. There's also one way up here, which it might be a little bit, you know, testing your batteries to send you all the way over there. That might be a bit on the tricky side. And with my low G turbines done as well, marvellous. Now my wind farm is even more on the efficient side. Now... Ooh, RC transport harvest resources faster, maximum storage, so we could carry around 45 things in a go. Alternatively, sensor towers no longer require- oh yeah, I really like stuff that means they no longer require maintenance, because then you can just slap them down, and you don't need to worry about eating into supplies of valuable stuff. Although actually, rockets requiring less fuel would be nice as well, then I could actually get more rockets going backwards and forwards for cheaper. That'd be good. And a new building, a polymer factory, albeit, ooh, okay, produces polymer from water and fuel, produces fuel from water, fuel refinery, well, I've already got a fuel refinery type thing, so maybe don't worry about that just for the time being. I really wish this one was wind farms acquired, no maintenance, that would be just bloody lovely, uh, but tragically not, no. Yeah, go on, as it's a cheap one, let's just go for cheaper or rather faster refueling. So, with all the concrete we dumped down here, we do indeed now have a water extractor. However, it is not currently powered, so we need to actually plug some power into this old girl. Luckily, we can connect the grids together. It's a little bit on the uh, expensive side just in terms of wiring, but it's probably the best thing for us to do, to be honest, because, yeah, these areas overlap. So between the two of you, you can totally 100% get this down, except we're going to need some actual stone over here. So you, my little RC transport, 
head over to, yeah, just head over to here. Pick up all the metal, please. Grab that and then dump it down over here so we can actually finish the connection. While you're doing that, these guys can start working on this side of the connection. But actually, we might be getting a bit low on metals. Because metals right now we're just grabbing off the surface. So, this might be a bit of... Actually, you know what? This is very... This is a very efficient use of... Actually, hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait. Let's just be careful here. Before I go spending too many metals... How many metals do I need to make a dome? I need 20 metals to make a dome. Actually, I've got 84 right now. I think I've got another... Is there just a big... Oh, yeah, there's a big pile back here. This is fine. We've got plenty of metal for the time being. So, I've just requested a very, very, very long power cable be laid out. But it only requires, like, per three hexes, one metal. So it's not that intensive. This guy's just picked up a whole bunch of metal. And now I'm going to tell him to unload that just down over here. And then the robots that are not currently doing anything will pick up that metal and start working on this. This thing also has a power draw of five. Right now, the grid should be in very good shape. Yeah, we're producing way more than we need. Everything's fine. Unless, of course, there's some form of nightmarish disaster. If there's a nightmarish disaster, there might be... Oh, Mars, and, and we have got ourselves an anomaly. We found another treasure in the form of a small deposit of a germanium-rich mineral. So, what exactly is... Ah! Well, that's very important. So, that there is our first deposit of, yeah, rare metals. Now, rare metals are what we need to sell back on Earth if we actually want to be making some money and funding this whole business. So, that there is a very, very good starting point. And that makes me immediately rethink what I actually want to do. Because my plan was originally to build the base just up here and just make it a farming colony and start thinking about trying to find a way to cut through these mountains by tunnelling because over here, there is definitely in this sort of area, which is why I'm scanning it, the game's indicating there may be some rare metals. But we found one set of rare metals immediately, grade very high. So that now changes my mind. Instead, now we probably want to settle our first base over here. We want to be a bit careful not to be too close to the concrete extractor. The so concrete extractor is... Oh, the concrete extractor is currently not in good shape. Because it is extremely badly deteriorated because no one's actually... Yeah, no one's working on this. Okay, uh, in which case, now that you've dumped the metals there, would you mind going over here, picking up, say... Yeah, control just five. How many are there there, actually? There's... I don't know. Let's take ten over just to be safe. Because, yeah, this area has... Wait, this area has... How many does this area have? This area... Sometimes it's hard to see how many resources are where. Because it says zero. Because technically there aren't any actually in the ship. If I go over here... Yeah, there's 26, but you can't see where they are. So I'm going to take this guy. And I'm going to basically send those over to here. And just basically dump them in this area, and the drones will figure out they need to use those kits to actually make all this work. Because, yeah, several of these guys do need maintenance, and this guy needs maintenance badly. Because right now, presumably, his actual production is much slower because he's so deteriorated because no one's doing maintenance on him. So the truck will send some machine parts over there, the drones will figure out the rest. Now, this thing is now... Aha! This thing now has started pumping. However... It doesn't actually have anywhere to pump water to yet. So, I've got a choice here. Either I turn it off to save the power, or I start basically stockpiling water. Because I can just stockpile some water immediately by building a water tower. Now, that has... Hmm. That has maintenance in the form of actual uh, metal as well, but... Probably best we do just stockpile a little bit of water. Yeah, let's just basically stockpile a tiny bit of water here as a starting point. So, actually, is there enough metal to do that? Or have we just used all the metal? We might have just used all the metal. This here's just concrete that's been dumped over there. Uh, hang on, where'd the truck go? I just sent the truck to drop off some machine parts, which hopefully these guys will figure out what to do with. Over here, we've got ourselves... There's 24... There's 14. Yeah, 14 will be fine. You pick up absolutely all this metal, because there's plenty more dotted around, and take that over to here. 
Like, the real reason you want the, um, the trucks is, say, if I had, like, no concrete near me, the only concrete mine was way over here, I could basically just set up the concrete mines over there and have the truck be constantly going backwards and forwards, picking up resources and dropping them off again. So you've just got that. So now, uh, unload that and just do it over here. Marvellous. And we have got new tech available for research off the back of that little scan. So what do we know about this? Drone hubs. We've got ourselves a new thing. A drone hub in robotics. So a drone hub costs 12 and... Ooh, 8 electronic. That's a bit expensive for this part. Controls drones and... Why is that better? Um, presumably, it just means I can have more drones off a single hub if I had to guess, but it's not very clear, so we'll leave it for the time being. Now, how's your power? Yeah, the thing is, your power's already under half, just by virtue of coming over here and doing that. So, your chances of getting way over here to wherever the anomaly is... Where's the anomaly? There it is. Your chances of getting up there with your current power is, I think, a little bit on the low side. So instead, how about you just come back over here, you can charge your battery from the power grid, that's how these guys recharge, if they run out of battery, you can send uh, this guy to go and recharge him, or you can just basically tell him to go to any power lead, and he can just basically plug himself into it and charge himself up with that. And in addition, thanks to all of the lovely metal that's in this part of the world, we can immediately start getting these pipes built. So as a result, this thing is now powered, producing water, and the water is now being stockpiled in here. So that is a capacity of 100 water. Now a basic dome does not require that much water at all, just to start off with. Though if you put specialised buildings in it, that might start being eaten up a little bit on the quick side, sure. But the priority for me would be, yeah, we probably want to build our first settlement over here. Not too close by to these guys who have now actually been repaired. Well done. <laughs> the guys are figuring it out. Damn it, oh, I love how it's all automated now. Uh, yeah, keep it a distance from these because these things produce like smoke and grime and yeah, contaminate nearby buildings with dust. So I'm not sure like how nearby, but if I build my first settlement down here, hook it into the grid over here, bring water in over here, build my first big mine over here. Yeah, that there, that could be just the flipping thing. Now the other benefit is as soon as we actually get some people down on the ground here... There'll be a convenient mine right here, so the potential issues of metal being a bit on the shy side won't come up. But let's plan this here, let's start planning this. So, basic dome required 20 for that, that's absolutely fine. Buildings we're going to be needing as a priority, uh, number one is probably going to be... Hang on, where is the... where's the basic... oh, do I need to actually research a basic farm? before we do that, because if so, that's probably just becoming a priority pretty quickly, actually. Hang on, back over to the research deck here. I don't see a farm here, but what I am seeing is soil adaptation, so I can build a farm that produces food. A large in-dome building requires no power, work efficient. I assume also that's a bit water intensive, but that's fine. We've got a great big water thing right down. Right, let's get that underway right now, please. Well, actually, as soon as the, yeah, the refueling thing's done. Okay, so current situation on the grid is at night, the total demand is now 42, and the production is only 32. However, there's plenty of spare power in the batteries for that sort of thing. And when day rolls around again, and night seems to be pretty short on Mars, because Mars kind of, I don't know, it, it rotates like really slowly during the day, and then kind of speeds up to help out the colony at night. Somehow. It's just a nice convenience. Uh, yeah, when the solar panels come back online, at that point everything's fine. Also, apparently you're not hooked in. Why are you not hooked in? Be hooked in. Also, now that this is no longer being built up here, because I was planning to build the dome like over here. Yeah, this power cable is now a bit of a waste. Now as this requires five power, I should have just built a wind turbine down here and that be the end of it. But screw it, if I ever do want to expand down here, at least I've already got a power cable. I can feed off going in this direction. So it's not the worst thing in the world. Plus, it kind of looks badass, so that's fine. This thing is still just stockpiling water. That's okay. I've just realised something that I've actually got a bit wrong here, which is, uh, yeah. What's happening is, this ship's trying to refuel itself, because these guys don't have that much to do yet. So what they're basically desperately trying to do is, every time fuel became available, they were going and grabbing it. So this ship's already a third refueled, whereas this ship 
was actually not getting refueled because these drones are actually busy doing stuff so couldn't get over to the fuel fast enough. So I've just slightly lowered the surface area of, hang on, of this area because it used to actually cover the fuel. I've actually lowered it slightly so it doesn't cover that anymore. So as a result, this ship can actually be the one that actually gets itself, uh, you know, refueled. Because I need to send this back home in order to pick up some passengers at some point. And why have buildings just stopped working? Okay. What, what's the problem here? Why do, why do we have problems? What's... Hello, what's wrong with you right now? Storage space is full. Ah, it's got nowhere to send all the concrete. Fine, I see. Wait, is it? Oh no, this storage space is full. Fine. It literally can't gather anymore because the little area that it needs to actually... Oh, blimey. Right, well, okay, we need to actually throw down some more concrete store in that case. Thankfully, that's all free, which is lovely. It's very bloody convenient. Uh, so, right, you guys get over there. Oh, blimey. Yeah, we've got a bit of a backlog. Okay, well, as you guys aren't doing anything right now, recall your drones, send them over here, and help out. Because I'm guessing that's going to actually be a fairly major problem at this point. Because dealing with the waste product and everything is actually slowing you down. So get you over here and deploy the drones. Now the drones will probably immediately get on with... Yep, they're immediately getting on with clearing out this here backlog. Marvellous. Though what I should also do is... In order to avoid these guys coming around here, grabbing and having to pull all the way around here... I'll also just slap down a new concrete depot in this part of the world. So now these guys, when they pick up this concrete, can just drop it off here, which will actually save them a fair bit of time. Also, more cables means more potential cable faults, uh, which can cause major problems for the grid, but it seems to be okay. Now, the downside of potentially building a dome down here is it doesn't fall within the service grid of quite a few, yeah, drones. That's going to cause problems when it comes to the drones actually helping out or not. But of course, drones can potentially be redeployed if at some point, aha, this is ready to go. Fine. So this old girl can now basically be deployed back towards... How does this control by the way? Aha. When this old girl actually takes off, her drones should fall under the control of the drone hub, which can control up to 100 drones by itself. And if I want to, later I can build more drones by actually constructing them here, but I need to actually do the research first. So, this old girl, time for you to head back towards Earth. So, take off now in progress. <laughs> Absolutely marvellous. So now, that rocket heads back to Earth. Admittedly, the rocket is not actually going to be doing much in the way of... Yeah, just, just let everyone get off first. <laughs> Get out of the rocket! Get out of the rocket! We've got, like, important... There we go! So that rocket's now going to take off. Cheese. That's absolutely fine. We have launched a rocket from Mars, we've refueled it. So now that rocket, as soon as it gets back to Earth, will be available to ship more things, or indeed, potentially, people, out to us. Now, where's the right place to build this here dome? Because this here dome, yeah. I'd say probably... I'm not exactly sure what the rules are for... Yeah, whether or not this dome's going to be able to handle that. But, bare minimum, this dome being able to handle... Ooh, but... I mean, I could just have... Okay, let's start off with a small dome here, and then we'll put a secondary dome over here. Let's focus on the important things right now, which is... Water and mining for metal. Because metal's getting a bit on the low side, to be honest. And over here, there's actually more resources. So how about we just... Yeah, we just throw down... A nice dome, right flipping here, nice and far away from any of the mess, but with some nice mining we can do, right flipping there. Our priorities are, produce some food and mine those metals, and then the metal situation will be under control and I don't need to worry about that being an issue. So, let's throw that down right now. And now we're going to have... Oh, it's going to be beautiful. It's just going to be so beautiful. So these guys leap into life because they want to make this happen. However, they don't have the materials to make it work. So this guy is going to need to help them with that, which is why I need to now create a transport route. So, set a source. I want you to go over here and just grab all the concrete you have. Once you've picked it up, I'd like you to dump it right here. So now as a result, he's going to do that over and over. I need him to do like three different trips of that anyway, because we're going to need like 80 concrete to make this work. Already they're basically throwing down all the concrete they have because there's a bit spare from when I built the water thing. That's fine. We're also going to be needing more metals. So sooner or later I'll have to send him some of that as well. 
this is where things start getting cool. Also, we've actually done the, yeah, we've done the farm thing. Right, what's that unlocked, by the way? Magnetic filtering, oxygen production up by 50%. Yeah, we need oxygen as well. That's the thing to not forget about, by the way. Yeah, go on then. As we're about to actually get some humans going on here, let's get some magnetic filtering for more oxygen. So now, all of our infrastructure starts coming together here. We've got the power. The grid has enough spare power for all of this easily, in fact, especially during the day. The basic dome, we've got concrete being brought in. You Did you just crash? Did you just crash into a rock? That's why we don't send the robots first. Or rather, maybe this is exactly why we send the robots first. Uh, so, at this point, he comes over here, picks up, I think he can pick up 30, takes it back over there, that helps out. If I had a second truck, of course, I could get that truck bringing over metals at the same time. We've got 49 metals remaining at the minute, just gotta make sure we've got 20 left at the end of the day. Now, other things we're going to need, obviously we need to tie this thing into water. How much does an actual pipe cost? Uh, one for five hexes long, fine, so that's really cheap to do. So, we'll simply have one of you coming straight over here. There we go. So that then is going to be hooked into this building and everything will be lovely. That should all be done off a single metal, which is nice. Just creating a stockpile of stuff, just... Ooh. Very nice and tetrisy there. Uh, how are we doing on the old concrete? Because by this point, aha, yep, this guy is now delivering tons of concrete. In fact, that might actually be... Is that going to be enough? How much have you got there? You've got 13 there. You got. I think you're going to need one more delivery, actually. Actually, no, there's only going to be... We might just have enough. Actually, instead, go and pick up as a priority... Where is the metal? Right now, I need you to pick up, actually, tons of metal. Grab as much of that as you can grab, because that we do need, so go and get that first. Now, at this point, yeah, during the days, both of my power accumulators do actually end up at capacity. But each of them requires a polymer for maintenance. Polymers are fine for the time being, however, but probably the power situation's... It's probably okay. Also, how is my... How's my situation with, yeah, machine parts? I probably need to start producing my own machine parts. Machine parts is the thing that keeps coming up as a problem. Electronics is fine. Machine parts is already down from 30 to 21 pretty quickly. So probably it would be a good idea for me to be able to produce at this place. One, a mine. Two, a farm. By the way, we've got the farm research, don't we? Wait, was that always there? That... Cock, that farm was always there. It's just, oh, balls. That was 100% always there. Fine. There was always the basic farming tech. It's just I was expecting to find it inside dome services. But it wasn't. It was in life support. Because you need, like, you know, hydroponics to live. But screw it. That requires power and maintenance. This doesn't. So, six workers, three workers. Yeah, we could get a farm down. Sure, let's try a farm. Why not? I mean, no reason to be maintaining this thing and consuming power and whatever when we can just farm the old-fashioned tradition away that just costs concrete. We got tons of concrete, that's fine. Especially as, yeah, zero maintenance just feels like a good idea to me. Okay, the metal delivery has arrived. And that should be, that should be enough metal to finish off the dome and also build this over here. So as soon as you are done unloading, now go and pick up Another set of concrete, please. One full load of that. We should be in good shape. And the materials are in place as more concrete gets delivered. And the dome is constructed. Our first dome as all of the little robots join forces to build it together. Oh, this I like. I like this moment because in a moment the dome's just going to look beautiful. And we have officially built a dome. Now, there's no air in it, so arguably there are still design flaws, but that's fine. We can fix that bit nice and easy. So, uh, hang on, life support, one moxie, so that just needs a little bit of power and what have you. So basically we can just plug this in right over here, put it straight into the grid, no problem. Bunch of spare metals and concrete and all that good stuff, so build that. Wire that, and I believe that uses the same pipe system as the water does. And we will actually be ready to have some flipping humans. Okay, Moxie gets built immediately. And that should start drawing power, hopefully. Is that actually powered? 
It is powered, but it's not hooked into anything that requires oxygen. It will be momentarily. So let's just start working on this. And as soon as these pipes are done, this thing should officially be... Are we good? Must be connected to... Yep. We have got ourselves a dome. Ready for flipping colonists. And would you believe we've got ourselves a ship ready to pick up some colonies right the hell now. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This. This has been well planned, damn it. This has been well planned. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen? I'd say that's enough for now. But we are not done with surviving Mars. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Join me here tomorrow. I love this game. I love this game so, so much. It's wonderful. Join me here tomorrow as we send our first humans to this first dome and we decide how to actually lay out the dome because these humans are going to be needing food. We're going to ideally need to produce some new materials, which will be very, very useful indeed. We're going to need to do some mining to get the, yeah, the metal situation under control because metals are getting a little bit on the low side at this point. So we're going to need to be doing some mining as well. And of course, we can just actually, you know, pick who we want to send over to Mars, build some more domes, probably get some mining going on. We're going to need to actually, like, you know, stabilize our economy at some point. So we're going to need a new base over here. Will probably be an excellent starting point. That would just be magnificent. And all of that will be coming tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been the really rather wonderful Surviving Mars. Thank you very much and goodbye. You know, I really hope we've agreed open borders with Japan, by the way. Otherwise, they have basically just invaded. I may have picked the wrong fight over... Yep. And my sisters, of course, have got even more flipping high-tech, though mysteriously still completely dependent on, you know, an aqueduct. Now, I'm not saying your entire army is mostly already dead, but it kind of actually is.